Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Dungeon Bowl Starting Rosters College of Life. So we're having a look at all eight of the Dungeon Bowl Colleges and the mixed carnage that is their rosters. So very cool and the College of Life is probably the most diverse. We've got Snotlings, we've got Wood Elves, we've got Nurgle. It's just a really interesting mix. We've even got Halflings in there as well. So what we're doing is we're having a look and putting together some example starting rosters. So Dungeon Bowl, whether you're playing friendly or uh, league based, it's going to be 1 million build, 50k rerolls for everybody, and some very interesting player choices. So let's have a look and see what you can take for the College of Life. So this college has so many different player options, we're going to have to do this in two parts here. So uh, College of Life, Lineman, 0-16 of the following choices. Halfling, Hopefuls, Nurgle, Rotter, Lineman, Snotling, Lineman or Wood Elf, Lineman. So a super mix here already. Okay, we've got the cheap 15k Lineman of the Snotlings and we've got the expensive but agile and fast movement 7, edge 2 plus Wood Elves there too. We've got cheap strength 3 guys in the Rotters at 35k apiece and then you've got the the kind of mid-range stunty version there the halflings at 30k really interesting mix of player and ultimately you're going to be able to buy one or two linemen with whatever cash you've got left over from the rest of the roster so this college of life would should never be really short of players and the cool thing is that each one of those that are available have a role to play the nurgle linemen like 35k movements garbage sure edges garbage sure but strength three at 35k is an absolute bargain this guy is cheaper than a goblin but stronger than a goblin so really cool mix runners 0 to 4 stilty runners halfling catchers and wood elf catchers there so you've got that movement 8 edge 2 plus dodge available in the wood elf catcher you've got the cool positional in the halfling catcher too and you've got 20k for a stilty runner movement 6 with sprint it's just a really interesting mix you've got a tool for any occasion the difficulty here is that the Wood Elves are quite expensive, but we've just looked at some very cheap linemen, so you can absolutely fudge them into play. They're going to be vulnerable, but they are going to be very fast, just like War Dancers. So this roster here gets 0-2 War Dancers, and realistically, for anybody planning a College of Life team, that should read two War Dancers. No naught, just two. War Dancers are excellent. Leap is going to be very useful in a Dungeon Bowl situation for jumping over corpses and just getting around and about. And the movement 8, strength 3, edge 2 plus blodge element doesn't hurt either. So War Dancers, they're excellent. And in Dungeon Bowl, I actually think they get even better. Uh, throwers, you can take up to two Wood Elf Throwers, movement 7, edge 2 plus, pass 2 plus with a pass reroll. If you're planning on being able to move the ball around, that passer is going to be really useful. And you get a choice of blockers. You can go for the Strength 4 Nurgle Bloater or the Strength 2 Halfling Hefty. You can take up to four of them. I like the ability to take those hefties. And at 50k, they're pretty fun. Um, but if you can afford a Nurgle Bloater, I mean, just being able to have that extra Strength 4. I mean, Foul Appearance and Disturbing Presence is going to do great work too in this dungeon situation anyone trying to move the ball around is going to come up against that that's going to be a significant challenge but strength four is key movement is low but the rest of the roster has got very good movement and it carries on we've got naught to four special players here with fungus flingers and fun hoppers so fun hoppers cannot be overlooked in this meta okay they're 20k their movement six, which is fantastic, but they've got pogo stick, which means they're three plus leaping everywhere. So you've got snotlings, they're great. They're two plus titchy dodging around, but the fun hoppers are also really useful. Two guys in a corridor, you can't even, even snotlings can't stunty titch dodge their way around that. But the fun hoppers can. So anytime you can upgrade a couple of snotlings or something like that to a couple of fun hoppers, it should definitely be considered. And then they're backed up by two big guys. And you've got a mixture here. You can go for Treeman. Now, Treeman are a good mid-range big guy when it comes to this roster. Their speed is garbage. And the fact they can take root, again, garbage. But strength six on the ability to throw teammate very effectively could be very useful. The rot spawns are going to be amazing in everything any tunnel so two rot spawns are going to be insane goalkeepers for your end zone and you spread them out you put them in a corridor strength five 
tentacles, foul appearance. They are going to be an absolute nuisance and they're going to do a beautiful job of just gumming up a corridor. So the rot spawns are going to be great for that. Train trolls though give you that extra option. It's they're just not as good at throwing a treeman, but they as throwing as treeman are, but they are still cheap. I mean 115k for a strength 5 big guy. Now these are train trolls as well, which means the loner is a 3 plus. So it's a really interesting mix of teams and players. It's just a shame the rot spawn can't throw because just being able to put them strength 5 tentacles down a corridor will shut that avenue down. So let's start out with a mixed three reroll build. Now this one comes in bang on 1 million gold pieces. 14 players and three rerolls means you've got plenty of flexibility. Now as we go through these rosters, I'm going to say it again, they are eight, they're starting rosters, but they're a starting point for your rosters. So you can season to your liking, you can drop a player, drop a reroll, boost up other players. There's so much interchangeability, but I like this one. I like where it starts out. So let's just double check I've got the right player count. I do. All right. So we've got two Nurgle Rotter linemen. That's 35k a pop. Their movement is slow. The agility is low. Strength three. They are going to be able to get in the way and that they're cheap as well at 35k. Two Snotling linemen going to be able to stunty, titchy, dodge their way around. Two plus plus. Anywhere there's a gap, a Snotling can get through. Now, the advantage here is that those guys are going to be able to bounce their way through and provide assists for the rest of your players. So a Nurgle Rotter and a Snotling lineman, that's 50k, but that's two players. That's two squares gummed up. The Snotling's going to be able to support that Nurgle Rotter on offense. They're going to be able to get in the way and Sidestep is going to be able to keep them exactly where you want them to be. So that's a great little tag team for the same price as a human lineman. But I mean, this roster's got so much fun bits on. We've got two Stilty Runners. Three plus Adge is cool. They've got Dodge. That's very good. They don't have Titchy, so they're just Goblin Dodging, okay, on a 3+, plus, but their movement's 6, and they've got Sprint, and they're 20k, so they're an absolute bargain for your runners. That's potentially 9 squares of movement, and if they die, it doesn't matter too much. Two Ward Answers. So you've gone from having the extreme of just garbage linemen to the Prem, pr Prime? Primo? player of Blood Bowl. Two Wood Elf War Dancers and in a Dungeon Bowl environment movement 8 Leap is going to be so useful. Blodge is going to keep them alive. It's very effective to have some War Dancers. Um, they are a little bit fragile but we've got two Nurgle Bloaters here as well. So that's two of those disturbing presence. Foul appearance, strength, four, regeneration, Nurgle's rot pieces. I mean they are going to be able to hold a corridor strength four is going to be so big in this event now what you have to consider is a lot of these players are going to be walking down dungeon tunnels there's going to be like three or four avenues from your end zone and you need to be in a situation where your little party your little adventuring parties of players are going to be able to do decently against somebody else's now the nurgle bloater is slow but in a dungeon environment they don't need to be that fast but with strength four on their side they're going to be able to win most one-on-one -on -one confrontations so that boosts up the ability of nurgle to be very very relevant uh we've got two wood elf throwers here i mean probably too much one is okay and you've got some spare cash then to throw around but movement seven past two plus that's going to give you the option to hoon that ball down a corridor and just get it gone and get it to one of your scoring threats of which you have plenty we've got war dancers we've got stilty runners we've got Nurg <laughs> nurgle no but we do have snotling linemen uh, and then we've also got two fun hoppers here now we've already talked about the fun hoppers that ability to pogo stick over players blocking a corridor is gonna be huge so what out for the college of life they've got some chunky slow dudes and they've got some fast scoring threats war dancers fun hoppers snotlings mixed in with nurgle bloaters nurgle rotters and just the ability to swarm the ground there's no swarming in this but every time you can bring a dude on so as the turns go on you're going to get what 14 15 players here 14 players onto the pitch without a shadow of a doubt so as we're building these rosters we're looking at where the starting point is so the last roster you've got bits from multiple different teams here and the college of life really does lean that way but what we're going to do now is we're going to look at uh, if you've got a wood elf team this is the wood elf heavy roster here so the starting point is you've got a wood elf team what do you need to add to kind of get the most out of it for a college of life dungeon bowl roster so the wood elf heavy roster comes in at bang on a million gold pieces i think it does indeed and you've got 12 players here with three re-rolls it's a clever little build uh, we've got four wood elf linemen two wood elf catchers 
two war dancers, one thrower, and three snotling linemen, and three rerolls. So this is very much a vanilla 11s wood elf roster, but what we've done is we've downgraded a wood elf lineman to three snotlings to boost up the numbers, and that gives you enough cash to purchase your third reroll. And that can be massive. We're not giving up anything. We've got the thrower here. So the thrower is going to be able to distribute the ball and do whatever it wants to do most of the time. We've got two ward answers and two catches. So that's four and two plus movement eight dodge threats immediately. So you are going to be able to disperse yourself through this dungeon. Absolutely no difficulty. Then you're backed up by four movement seven edge two plus players with the Wood Elf lineman, and you've got three Snotlings there who are there to soak up some cash, build up your numbers, but you can bamf them in through teleporters later on in the game and they're going to be able to wander around, getting in the way, applying that sidestep and potentially just detonating, um, <laughs> detonating the treasure chests. Now, this roster is built to use as many Wood Elf only models as possible. So what you need to get here is three tiny players, three Snotlings. Now, if you want to go the Wood Elf theme, you can get three little tiny tree men or something, three sprites uh, like we did with our tree man team in seven super series to give that wood, wood Elf vibe. And you're still playing Wood Elves, but you've just got the ability to use those tiny dudes. Now, if you're going to take this roster and tweak it around, you can drop a reroll. You could flex out. I would probably uh, drop a couple of, well, drop a Wood Elf lineman and pick up a few uh, hoppers as well. But I wanted this to be as close to a Wood Elf roster as possible. But adding those hoppers in multiplies your scoring threats. So we've done the Wood Elf roster, now we're going to do the Halfling roster. So the Halfling heavy build here comes in at 990 and we've got a monstrous 14 players. So 8 Halfling hopeful linemen, 2 Halfling catchers, 2 war dancers. Now the war dancers are essentially ubiquitous when it comes to the life roster. If you don't have Wood Elves, you're going to need to find some because those war dancers are going to be amazing in this format. Two Dreamen as well will balance it out and bring you to three rerolls. So if you are a halfling player, you need two models to represent your war dancers. You've probably got some star players. So actually, if you're a halfling coach and you want to play the College of Life, Griff, Carla, they'll be your war dancers for this roster and you're good to go. You've got those two trees. Now, there's a couple of watch outs with this roster in a, in a dungeon bowl environment. It's great having a lot of players because you can bring them in each turn and you'll start slowly swarming the dungeon. And stunty players are great because they're going to be able to use that stunty dodge ability to go wherever you want. The downside is they're going to lose almost every one on one matchup you're going to come across in a dungeon. So definitely something interesting to there to, to think about. Now with the halfling heavy roster, there's a couple of things you can do. And I would absolutely say bin off two of those halflings, bring on some hoppers to kind of start building up that ability to bounce around. And you know what? The treeman it's definitely worth considering whether or not you want to run Treeman here. They're very slow, and for that price, you could take a couple of Rotters instead. You could essentially still use your Treeman models if they're not giant, but they'd just be more reliable, but definitely softer. And we've got the Nurgle Heavy build as well. So this one comes in at 11 players, 2 rerolls at 985. Now, you don't get a lot for your money when it comes to Nurgle. And by sticking with as many Nurgle players as possible, uh, we can do something cool. But this is, again, a very great starting point for you to start thinking, what models can I use and how can I flex from my, my Nurgle team? Five Rotters, two War Dancers, four Bloaters, 11 players, three rerolls here at 985. So what you're doing is you've got four of those strength four blockers. Now, they are going to be able to help smash your way through stuff but also hold the line. A rotter and a bloater in a corridor is going to be very difficult for your opponent to get through. That foul appearance is going to help. Disturbing presence is going to stop really. It's going to limit any ability for them to go for some kind of stretch play. And the rotter is going to be able to stop them from being able to outnumber that bloater, which in that circumstance means they are going to have to front up with a big guy to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a, with, a, with a bloater. And you've still got great scoring threats there with your war dancers. Now, to start off, uh, my initial six drop would probably be four bloaters and two war dancers, and they distribute throughout the dungeon. Okay, you use those bloaters to defend your corridors, and you can bring the rotters on one by one to spread out throughout the dungeon and just cause a bit of difficulty. It's a cool roster, it's very Nurgle heavy, and if you're looking to advance, again, you can drop some players bring on some snotlings uh, I wouldn't 
want to drop the war dancers to bring on a rot spawn but actually you could drop two bloaters bring on a rot spawn and fill out the rest of the numbers with nurglings and that's the really cool thing here is that you can start theming so if you've got a nurgle theme use nurglings as snotlings if you're going for a wood elf theme you use tiny trees or sprites as your uh, snotling elements to it and you know if you want to go with the bloaters you can use some tree people there's it, it's a really cool roster to start brewing up builds and then doing the hobby for so there you have it. Those are some of my initial builds for the College of Life. There are probably hundreds of different ways to build this roster. I'm a big fan of this one because you get a bit of everything. You get some strength for Nurgle. You get the Snotling Fun Hoppers. You get the Stilties. You get the little guys. It's a great mix and mash. And I think I just already gushed about the ability here to start brewing up what you want your team to look like. And if you're going to custom build a College of Life roster, it's probably the one when you've got the most flex. You've got Wood Elves, you've got Nurgle, you've got Tiny Dudes. It's a really cool mix and match situation. And you've got some great expensive players and some great cheap players. So I just think go forth and design and please share your roster ideas for the College of Life in the comments below. I'd love this to start being the flashpoint for some great ideas because each of these rosters can be changed in a million different ways and that's just oh it's just so much fun <laughs> anyway i'm going to wrap up now thank you very much for watching we'll be back soon with more blood bowl content happy dungeoneering thanks very much for watching we really appreciate your support if you want to help support the channel even further please like and subscribe or come join us on our patreon we have early access to content we get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.